This episode is brought to you by Ursa Minor Outfitters. Folks, I'm absolutely in love with my Loon mug. It's handmade. It's an absolute piece of art. Whether it's at the office or at the house, people keep asking to check it out. If you're not a Loon fan, they also have other beautiful mugs for wildlife fans of moose, bears, and eagles. They specialize in products highlighting the outdoors and local pride through quality design by local artists. They've even started expanding into items beyond mugs, like apparel, dog accessories, and soon candles and more. They also try to partner and highlight other small businesses, and in some cases, forgo profits in lieu of charitable giving to help their community, such as the dog rescue. So check them out, ursaminoroutfitters.com, and enter promo code HIKESMIKES10 at checkout to receive 10% off your order. And for our four-legged hiking partners, they also have a portable silicone dog bowl and also a sweet over-the-collar dog bandana. Go check them out, ursaminoroutfitters.com, and don't forget to enter promo code HIKESMIKES10 at checkout to receive 10% off your order. Welcome everyone to the Hikes and Mikes podcast. I'm your host, Ivan, and together we'll embark on a weekly journey connecting with extraordinary hikers from all corners of the U.S. and beyond. Throughout these summer months, we've had the privilege of conversing with some remarkable individuals. Their experiences and adventures will leave you yearning to hit the trails. In the season seven finale, we not only have a special guest, but also a special recording location. Nearly two years since our first episode, we joined Grant at Mount Rainier National Park to close out the season. You can follow him on Instagram at Gallivanting with Grant. We catch up with Grant and hear about some of his amazing gallivants across the West. He catches us up on visiting national parks, as well as hitting the trails in SoCal with some amazing hiking clubs. Grant also shares with us the history behind his blog, Grateful Gallivanters. Without further ado, let's jump into this episode with our guest, Grant. Welcome, everyone, to the latest episode of the Hikes and Mikes podcast. I have a really special guest with me today and a special recording location. We're at the base of Mount Rainier National Park at the Paradise Lodge. I'm here with Grant. It's been probably two years since we recorded because I feel like we recorded in like October of 22. I believe. Yeah, so it's almost two years and... I'm stoked to be able to see you again because I saw you last time in February when we did the yep. Rocky Point hike with Just Trek and Outdoor yep. Adventures Plus. Yep. But uh, how you been, Grant? I've been doing well. It's been quite the year, lots of changes, but yeah, all in all, really lots going on, but lots of good things going on, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like in those two years since we recorded the first episode, you've been able to like really explore different areas of the country. What have been some memorable highlights and locations over the last two years? Yeah, seems like a lifetime ago. Well, this trip, but a lot of it is this year. Like, so Warrell National Park went to the east and the west. The west is the one that's special. You have giants of warrells that just, you know, tower in the sky. So that was cool. Let's see. Gosh, there's so many places, man. Joshua Tree went and camped. So I'm starting to camp again. I, I camped when I was younger and I'm starting to do it again. Went to Flagstaff recently. That's my uh, favorite non-California city. I've gone there. And then some cities that I didn't expect. San Francisco. Went up there a couple times and that was actually really cool. I exceeded my expectations. Really visited Southern Utah a lot. So Bryce. I went to Gran Escalante National Monument, which is so expansive. But people don't really go there because there's, there's not a lot there. And then Northern Utah, like American Fork, the Alpine Loop, which was brought up by your recent guest. So, yeah, just a lot, really. And I have a lot planned, too. So we'll get into that. But, yeah, I got a lot, <laughs> lot in the docket. I'm glad you mentioned camping because you got me interested in camping at Red Rocks outside of Vegas. Can you oh. share a little bit about that experience? Yes, that too. See, I've been to so many places that I just, yeah, I can't think of them off the top of my mind. So I have a friend that lives in Vegas and she was telling me about, like, I had known about it because I, I was there about maybe a little over a decade ago. I was there, but I didn't really, I just took the loop, just drove around the loop, but I didn't really get a chance to hike in. She showed me the places to go and stuff. And we took a really nice hike that took you to kind of a little pond. And then you just go a little bit beyond the pond and bam, there's just 
a whole uh, view of the Las Vegas skyline and the red rocks in the background. It's pretty amazing, but the campground is actually really cool. It just backs up against the red rocks, so you can see the red rocks in the distance. And looking up at the sky, you're away from the light pollution, so you're able to see a lot of stars. So a lot of people think of Vegas as casinos and events and gambling, but there's actually a lot more to it. And I have to give you props because you're the one that really introduced me to the outdoor scene in Vegas because like you said most people go there for casinos yeah. nightlife and that was me but then seeing your stories from Valley of Fire yeah from Red Rocks because I've been going to Vegas for like over 10 years and yeah. never we almost uh, yeah. saw each other we just missed each other at Valley of Fire yeah yeah and I finally made it to Red Rocks at the beginning of the year in January when I was there. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's 30 minutes away from the strip. It's really short. You do have to get a timed entry uh, permit, but it's yeah. well worth it. Yeah, and the loop's like 20 bucks, but it, it's really cool. Like I was there a little over a decade ago and I actually had ran the convertible, <laughs> driving around in a convertible, feeling the wind and stuff. That was pretty cool. Yeah. But this time was hiking and I went to multiple spots in the park. The trails off the top of my head, I've been to so many trails over the past couple of years. I don't remember, but it's like Calico Basin, yep. the tanks. Calico tanks. Yeah, yeah. For Vegas locals, please yeah, feel <laughs> free to correct me on that one. But yeah, explore different areas on the on that scenic hike highway a lot more trees at certain parts of the park a lot more greenery so it's, it's a really diverse ecosystem you have part that has joshua trees too so yeah you know one thing that caught my attention earlier this year is you got a chance to visit death valley national park when um... another one that <laughs> <laughs> but that one you got there when i forgot the name of the basin bad water, water basin bad water basin yeah how was it seeing it with water like it was surreal amount? yeah honestly i owe a lot to the community I'll see places and I'll be like, wow, that's really cool. I got to go there. So the story of that, I was actually on my way to the Eastern Sierras, just taking 395. And then this is how I work in a nutshell. I, I am not afraid to change my mind on things and make decisions. So yeah, I was just filling up. I had to get gas. I was in Ridgecrest and I'm like, huh, wow, I'm only an hour and a half away. I really want to see this bad water basin because I know it's going to evaporate, you know, once the temperatures heat up again. And so I was like, I'm going to go. So there I am in my jeans and my boots walking in the water it's amazing because again like it's gone to 130 i think this summer and just a couple short months before that i was in the 60s and i was just walking water it's it just like an inland ocean almost <laughs> so yeah i know quite a few people have had the privilege of going there too so it was really cool experiencing that and was the water cold it was cool but yeah you were walking on salt too so it was actually pretty soft but i, I okay. planted my selfie stick in there <laughs> and it took like at, at least over a month to get all the salt uh, out yeah i was talking to one of my other uh friends and the same thing happened to her yeah. oh man worth it <laughs> now another thing that happened earlier this year is we finally got a chance to meet in person and i don't know if it was uh, the first time for you but it was the first time for me to do a group hike like that where i want to say it was close to 40 people came out for this star yeah. wars themed hike yeah that justin and jonathan from just trek and yeah. outdoors adventure plus put together as their sequel I yeah yeah. experience to go on your point i am a solo hiker and before this year i hadn't really gone on in fact no i hadn't gone on a group hike but one of my goals was that i wanted to make new friends coming off a hard breakup and just looking for ways to heal and one of them was like just exposing myself to new people new experiences so i felt a hiking group would be great but i didn't really know where to turn to and then you hit me up and you're like hey i'm gonna be in town and i was like all right yeah for sure we'll meet and uh, i didn't really know what to expect but yeah i got there and becca was there one of the most talented photographers on ig yeah. she was there and then i met justin jonathan a couple other content creators that i still keep in touch with and yeah, at first I was shy because I'm really shy around big groups, but they were very welcoming and I, I felt at home by the end of that hike. So we went to Golden Road yep. after that, had some beers and stuff. So that was cool. So fast forward to the day and Jonathan's a, a close friend of mine. Justin's a close friend of mine. And I've made a couple other friendships from the group too, but they were the organizers. They were the ones that were really welcoming and made it all possible. And you've got a chance to do a couple more group hikes with them since February. Yeah, I was really 
busy in April and May traveling and stuff, but we went on a couple in June, went on a couple waterfall hikes. So that was pretty cool. I'm kind of spoiled that way. Like I forgot to tell you, last summer I went to Montana with my dad and my uncle. We took a week-long vacation there in Glacier National Park. No. So I'm going to everywhere but California. <laughs> like I've had people be like, oh, I didn't know you're from California. Yeah. You know, you post, you know, other states. But yeah, my home mountains, I never really gave a chance to and, and they focus on local places so went up to griffith park i uh, went up to rubio canyon eaton canyon so these places that i'd never heard of and it, it gave me a greater respect for each place especially going inside the waterfall yeah so they've really exposed me to new things so it's always nice meeting up with them too so they've exposed me a lot to the local mountains yeah the local scene no i definitely want to go back come fall winter yeah um, man and do a couple group hikes with them and a couple of other folks orange county is definitely on my radar because you're from orange county yep there's the pumpkin rock i think it's called pumpkin rock in riverside riverside so that's not that far away uh, pumpkin rock is pretty cool very family friendly for those of you that have kids a lot of families go up there too the hike's not that bad but uh, yeah that'd be a great one you know not a lot of people in the community are from orange county i, I have oh. yet to really meet there's like a couple maybe mm-hmm. but yeah for us we're known mainly for coastal hikes laguna beach has some great hiking it's laguna wilderness and there's this great trails that overlook the ocean newport beach same thing so we're really known for coastal hikes but we have the cleveland national forest which is it's not like here in rainier not even close <laughs> but it's nice to be able to drive there sometime and just get hike among oak trees and yeah. other shrubs and stuff oh yeah. man yeah i've really have grown to admire the socal hiking scene because for a long time i thought it was just almost like desert landscape but yeah the more i see it like you guys have ski resorts at mount yep. baldy yep you got bear mountain hikes. too bear mountain bear, yeah there's uh, the one that you talked about in your first episode, San Jacinto. San Jacinto. Yep. Um, yeah, Justin went up there recently. Yeah. Yeah, I and think... we're actually taking OA Plus, Outdoor Adventure Plus. We're taking a camping trip up there in late August. I talked to Rudy about it. Rudy is, he serves as the group's photographer. I already talked to him about that, so he's game. So we'll see if everyone else is game to hike up to the summit. And uh, Grant, one thing I wanted to ask you, because it was one of your more recent travels and a place that I really fell in love with when I lived in Arizona, and that's Flagstaff. How was that recent experience? You know what? You wouldn't really know. A lot of people associate Arizona with desert, but there's a lot more to it. So I'd already been to Flagstaff a couple times, like just the pass through to Sedona or going to Grand Canyon. But this past trip was the first time that I actually went and hiked. So I hiked Schultz Creek. And it's funny, one of the one of my friends, she actually was like, oh, I was there last weekend. So I didn't really know it was known. But yeah, it's like an hour and a half northeast of Phoenix. So really not that far at all. And the Mogollon Rim is home to the largest Ponderosa pine forest in the world. It's beautiful. And Flagstaff's fun. It's where Northern Arizona University is. So a lot of, oh gosh, I, I'm too young to be saying this, man. I'm 31, <laughs> but a lot of young people yeah. uh, are, are there. Uh, yeah, a lot of whippersnappers. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but uh, oh. so it's a very, it's very vibrant up there. So there's plenty of things to do. But yeah, the hiking scene is really good. One of these days, I want to hike up to Mount Humphreys. Yeah. It's over 12,000 feet. And what was interesting, you and I talked about this Sunset Volcano National Monument. Yeah, so I went in the visitor center and they had a little history. Apparently, Humphreys was a lot bigger. It was like 26,000 feet. I'm sure y'all can, you know, fact check me. But then the volcano erupted and it lopped off. Yeah, I've only cheated and I've done the gondola up to like (laughs) 10,000 feet. But that whole stretch up there, not just Sunset Volcano, but there's so many more cones out as you travel east. If you look on a map, you could just see all those little volcanoes all over northern Arizona which is just wild yeah I had a a friend tell me I gotta gotta go there gotta go there and you had her on the show Kelly yeah yes yes I had the privilege I'm going off a little off tangent but I had the privilege of meeting her in her neck of the woods along with my friend Britt Britt Wonders another talented content creator and yeah I got a chance to have lunch with both of them and that was an eye-opening experience because in my neck of the woods it gets warm in the summer but you know you're able to outdoor dine 
line and yeah. you know without a problem and and we went there to eat and it was outdoor dining the wall had misters attached and they had a giant fan outside <laughs> one of the waitresses was carrying someone else's food and it got on me oh. and she's like oh my gosh i'm so sorry and i'm like it's okay but i was so surprised like i was like we don't have this stuff in california it's like the water misters were hitting yeah. me but it was 96 so that was quite the wake-up <laughs> call so we had a, a really nice lunch got a chance to talk about our lives the stuff we were doing so i just i love meeting uh people from the community yeah i was i was talking about kelly because she told me i gotta visit Cindercone. you make a good point you really kicked it off for me this year meeting you and becca and juan and, and justin yeah on that star wars themed hike really yeah. kicked it off because feel like i've met at least another five guests yeah in, right on since then and i'm looking forward to continuing that trend and it's nice like you said to meet people from the community in person and be able to have lunch go on a hike it's been a, a really supportive community and um so thankful to be able to make those online connections into reality we're recording in mount rainier national park just outside of the paradise lodge Inn. it's been a decade since you've been to the park yep how's the trip been so far and and what changes have you noticed since the last time you were here yeah so 2021 we went my dad my uncle and i we went to the sunrise part of the park we didn't make it up here but yeah coming up here to paradise again definitely more busy than was before and and that's to me that's a good thing because there's a greater awareness in nature of these places so i i feel like as long as people are responsible and you know practice leave no trace then you know it's perfectly uh, fine for people to be up here but it's funny it's just as green as i remember it snow is you know just how i remember it but yeah it was funny it was around this time of year and a lot of it is similar like today we went up the skyline trail and little bits of memories will come back so it's nice to know that there's so much change that goes on in life life never stops moving but there's certain places you can return to and you're just like ah you know like the trees are still here yeah. there's there's still snow that like you can just return to these places years later and and just know that yeah it likely hasn't changed no. and you you touched on it you hiked skyline trail today seven miles how was it today it was really pretty really pretty hike there was some tricky spots there's some snow patches my dad slid down a hill that was pretty funny <laughs> on purpose or yeah <laughs> yeah i was joking with there's some people there I was, I was joking i was like the roles have reversed because when i was in my younger 20s i probably would have done that but <laughs> i was the responsible one. i was the one recording him and he was doing something reckless so <laughs> yeah there's views everywhere you look so there's rainier we could see mount st helens and then further off in the distance we can see mount hood so there's just peaks everywhere you look it's just mountains on steroids one of the hikers so it's just you know it's <laughs> mountains on steroids here yeah, yeah. And some of the wildflowers are starting to peak out. You know, we're barely yeah. getting into the wildflower season. Some bare grass, some paintbrushes that we've yeah. noticed already. And how was your experience going in? Because, you know, this is the first year that Rainier did the timed entry. So you needed a, a timed permit between 7 and 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I was able to get one last night. It's two bucks. Yeah, two bargain. bucks. I had to be in either by 1 o'clock or no later than 3. And you had National Park Pass. Mm -hmm. Biggest wow. bargain ever. Yeah. Listen, y'all, a National Park entrance cost thirty dollars one time but for the year it costs 80 bucks so if you go to three national parks during the year it pays for itself so y'all yeah. invest in the national park path <laughs> even for me outside of the national park pass there's two national forests and that covers... oh right national forest national monuments that you yep. can get into there too it covers yeah. that yep and you know last time you said you made it to sunrise and this time you're in paradise what big difference did you see between sunrise and paradise because sunrise is a little bit higher in elevation yeah more wild Wildflowers. More wildflowers in Sunrise Park. The Wonderland Trail, we hiked the part of it, and that was amazing. I felt like I was in the Swiss Alps. I saw some marmots chasing each other. Yeah, but I noticed definitely more wildflowers in that part, and that's probably lower elevation, but that's probably the thing that I noticed, that there's more wildflower activity. Have you yeah. had a chance to see any critters, woodland creatures? Saw a marmot resting on a rock this morning. Got a picture of that. A couple chipmunks were hustling at a panorama point. One of the kids was like, a chipmunk took my food, Dad. <laughs> he was like, oh, real? Oh, gosh. Yeah, they're little hustlers. Don't give them food, y'all. 
Keep yeah. them wild because they're going to get used to that. So that was pretty funny. Okay. Not a ton of birds, which is interesting enough. I haven't seen oh. a ton of and plenty of bugs. So not as much up here. So we got in the park yesterday, but it was backed up. So we were going to get there at three, but it was pretty backed up for like 40 minutes. And so I took a nap during that time. So I, I feel like what the National Park Service should do, it's kind of hard because it's only one lane in each direction, but they should create like, you know, two lanes in each direction, one for people who paid and one for didn't. But yeah, I mean, there's worse places you can wait but this morning we got there right at seven and i had to explain to the lady that i cut my finger while shaving so we would have gotten there early but i had to show her my bandage and we were joking with her but yeah she let us in but they take that seriously i mean that you gotta be there right at seven it's great because it eliminates the mass crowd but that's what i was telling you a little bit ago i did say there was less people i i think they're doing a better job of managing the crowds because it can get out of control at times like we're seeing that with yosemite there's just a ton of people and i think a permit system it's only two bucks but a lot of people either don't know about it or don't want to put in the effort to do it so I think it's really genius. I saw a big difference on my side. So I come typically through the eastern side of the park. I came from the coma. Yeah. So you came through the Ashford yeah. entrance. And I think last year they were saying during peak summer, there was a two and a half hour wait just to get into the park before the entry system, which yeah. is just crazy. But I did notice that there wasn't as many traffic jams coming up to Paradise with the entry system compared to without it. So that is one benefit. And I will say the fact that they release a certain number of tickets the night before at 7 p.m. for the following day does give you the opportunity to do a sporadic trip if you do get a free day and you want to visit the park. Yep, that's how I operate. (laughs) I'm very (laughs) spontaneous. I'll think of things the night before. So yeah, they're definitely a step in the right direction for sure. I'm impressed by the crowds that I've seen. There's there's good crowd management here. So we're getting to the the last three questions that we like to ask all our guests. And I'm interested in seeing if um, maybe Maybe these have changed for you since we last recorded almost two years ago. When it comes to either a regular routine on or off the trails, is there something that you like to do or maybe it's something new that you've started doing? When you reach a summit, when you get back to the trailhead, you know, for some it's favorite food or snack. And then for a lot of us, it's that meal afterwards. Is there anything regularly that you like to do on and off the trail when you reach your destination? I like to just honestly find a rock or if, if it's close enough, I'll I'll bring my camping chair. I just, I honestly just like to be able to look around and stuff. Before, when we talked, I was always kind of like a get there, got to get there. Now, when I hike, I, I go a little bit, take my own time. Sometimes I'll even take a nap and stuff. What changes is that I now spend more time at the places that I go to. So my mindset has changed from, oh, when I'm here, I got to go here, here, here. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, okay, like here, for example, we were going to do like a 15 mile hike today. And I was telling my dad, I was like, dad, why don't we just do a hike that's half of that? And we can spend more time at a place instead of having to, you know, literally tire ourselves Mm -hmm. out. So yeah, mainly I just like to meditate and take everything in. I'd say sometimes if there's people around, I wear my headphones and listen to my yeah music. You know, when it comes to your pack list, and this is also something I'm interested in seeing if it's changed, is there a luxury item that you like to bring that falls outside of the essentials list? I want to say the first time we recorded, it was your selfie stick. Yep. But has that changed? Is there something else that you pack on a regular basis? Yep, selfie stick. But now I also bring a change of clothes because <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Love my dad. We were crossing a wood bridge yesterday and he slipped and fell. So he had to wear his long johns back to the car. Once we were done, we went to the lake and I joked with him. I was like, you're looking very athletic. (laughs) Yeah, but definitely a clean change of clothes. So that's boxers too, not just the pants and shirt, tank top, socks, yeah, everything. So so I've started to do that because you just never know what can happen on a trail. And then it's pretty much the same. I definitely bring more water than I used to. Mm. Definitely more careful. Like I brought a 64 ounce uh, big old... (laughs) canteen i barely even got through half of it you can never have too much water on the trail so i'd say not just a selfie stick anymore i definitely pack more and then we're in the middle of july recording this are there any other hiking or road trip goals for the remainder of the year yep i got three plans so september i'm going to be flying to grand junction and i'm going to be taking a trip to the maroon bells wilderness and hiking to a place named thomas lakes 
So it'll be awesome going into an alpine lake. I love alpine lakes. Very cold, but yeah, once you get used to it, it's awesome to swim around in there. So I'm going to be exploring that part of the world. Going to be going to for that Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. Uh, I've always wanted to go there because people say it's similar to the Grand Canyon. So I'd love to see that for myself. And if time permits, I just learned about this from my friend Monica. She was talking about the Million Dollar Highway. It goes to, down to Oray, Colorado, and it's really beautiful. It, it costs a million dollars to build. So if time permits, but I'm also going to head back north before I fly on go to the Colorado National Monument. And I refer to that as the Zion of Colorado. I, the, the rocks are really reminiscent of the ones that I see when when I go to Zion. So yes, yeah, so I'm just going to be taking a loop there. November is going to be bigger. So November, I'm going to be flying to Ogden, Utah. I'm going to be meeting three of my content creating friends and we're going to be going in the Uinta wilderness. We're going to be hiking on a trail called Wind Caves. And I've always wanted to spend some time in the Uintas. I did briefly last year, but that was more so that we just drove around. I went to a place called Mirror Lake and Upper Provo Falls. But yeah, this time I'm actually going to be doing some hiking, not just walking to a fall. And the next day I'm going to be going to Taggart lake and bradley lake loop my dad and i we went there in 2020 and that's what we did so i'm gonna be going back and hiking there and then the next day i'm going to idaho which i've never been to idaho before so that'll be cool to a place named drake creek which has a viewpoint you got you climb a little bit but you can see the western end of the tetons I haven't seen them from that vantage point so really looking forward to uh, seeing them from uh afar and at that angle and then i'm gonna be making my way through idaho back to ogden so that's november and then uh, December, I'm going to be flying to St. George and then I'm going to be driving up to Snow Canyon State Park. I've heard a lot of great things about it. I hope that there's water there because there's Gunlock Falls. Mm -hmm. And I, I know a couple of people have gone there. So I want to see that with water. Then I'm going to be driving to Kolob Canyon, which is actually the northwestern part of Zion. Zion's actually oh, big. Oh, but yeah, but there's an extension called Kolob Canyon. It's like a five mile road but you there's hiking trails along there and then i'm gonna be driving up to cedar city where i'll be spending some time in cedar breaks national monument i hope which is what uh, a lot of people consider to be a poor man's bryce canyon okay and then later uh, that day i will be driving to bryce canyon but first i'm gonna be stopping in red canyon yeah, Red Canyon is a lot of people driving on the 12. They just completely skip over it. They just get out. Oh, okay, take pictures. When you drive there, there's a couple arches and you drive through the arch. And that's what it's known for. But I'm actually going to spend part of the day hiking it. So there's a hiking trail called Thunder Mountain that's like 15 miles. But then there's also the Cassidy Trail, which the name implies Butch Cassidy grew up in that part of the world. Oh, no So, it, yeah, it was named in Panguitch, Utah. And then I'm going to be going to the Ruby Inn in Bryce. That staying there for a night okay. and then going to be waking up early the next morning and catching the hoodoos the light bouncing off them i hope going to be going down the queen's garden doing a little hike in there that's always special and then yeah i'm going to be heading back towards saint george i'll probably stop at zion if i have any daylight left and then yeah next morning flying back to saint george so yeah i know that was a while but yeah i got three big trips planned yeah, your second half of 2024 yeah. is going to be huge. Yeah, the best is yet to come. Yeah. I've heard great things about the western section of Colorado. And I yeah. think one common theme is when it comes to the national parks, a lot of people say the Black Canyon of, was it Gunnison? Black Canyon to Gunnison. Yeah is one of the most, if not the most underrated national park in, in our system. Amazing views. And yeah, I think I could spend a month in Southern Utah and not see everything. So I'm really stoked. To, Have we done the five? The Mighty Five? Zion's the last one on the list. Oh my God. Yeah. That, that should be like the first, man. <laughs> I've been there like five times, man. Yeah. yeah it's, it's special. Well, you're saying the best for last. Yeah. Man. Yes. Zion's special. Yeah. I guess to kind of piggy bank off that, shortly before I was a guest, I had actually actually done the mighty five that year okay yeah, yeah yeah so for those of you who are thinking of doing some road trips you got some time definitely spend some time in utah it's well worth the time to do the mighty five and even like some of their state parks should be national parks absolutely well i'm stoked to see all the content that you share with us yeah in 2024 from those trips it sounds yeah. like it's going to be a blast that was it for the regular questions grant this last bit of the podcast is the this or that questions they've changed a little bit yeah. since the time you were yeah. on some are still the same but most of them are new so 
it'll be interesting to see what your thoughts are on some of these. First one is when it comes to trail systems, do you prefer one with a steep incline or steep decline? I'm gonna say incline, just because I have, on the way down, I have some problems with my meniscus, they kind of flare up. So I'm trying to stave off the, the hiking poles. I wanna think that I can do it on my own, but yeah, it may have to be a point in time in the near future where I have to bring those hiking poles. So, but for that reason, incline. And then this one's a hard one, but waterfalls or summits? Summits. I just love views. I love being able to see from all directions. And when it comes to trail systems, do you prefer ones with switchbacks or would you rather just go straight up? Oh, hell no, man. Switch, no, hell no, no. Just go straight up, man. <laughs> Let's just get out the way, man. Switchbacks, man, they just delay the inevitable. You gotta take the long way up. No, no, no. Straight incline. Let's just go straight. Okay, I like that. Yeah. And you kind of answered it, but trek poles are freehand. Freehand. And then when it comes to your footwear, trail runners or hiking boots? You know, I gotta say, the community really opened my eyes to trail runners like a lot of your guests have and that made me kind of think because I've always been a boot guy historically but I did invest in a pair of Merrill boots a couple months ago and I really love them they're great I, I wore my boots in this case because it's high incline and snow patches but if I had the option trail runners it's like close that? though yeah it just depends on where you are and then this is another trail system question but loop trail or an out and back trail for me, when I content create, I just get in my own little world. So on the way, like I'll set my selfie stick down a lot and walk or take, you know, recordings, take pictures. So I like out and back just because once I get to my destination, I can put my selfie stick away. And then on the way back, I can actually look around and, you know, that way. I don't have to whip out my phone. So I'd say, yeah, yeah, out and back. And then when it comes to your watering carrying system, do you carry a traditional water bottle like a Hydro Flask, Nalgene, or do you prefer a Camelback or like hydration pack? Yeah, I'm not a big hydration pack kind of guy. I'm not a bladder guy just because you got to clean it. So I know it's a little heavier, but I have a 64 ounce canteen that I carry around and I don't mind. And then these next two are the toughest ones, sunset hikes or sunrise hikes? Yeah, great question. I have friends, like it's happened a couple times already this year where I'm trying to do more group hikes as we talked about before. And there was one instance recently, hike up to Baldy they were gonna do. And I told one of my friends, I was like, oh yeah, you know, I'm down. Like I didn't have any plans. She's like, oh, okay, good. We're gonna be at 4, 4.30 a.m. And I'm like an hour away. Like I'm not gonna sit there and wake up at like 3.30. No, man, <laughs> I, I need my sleep. Uh, no, no. Uh, so I'm, I'm definitely more of a sunset guy just because I'm able to rest and and, you know, get ready and do things during the day. And then bam, I saved the best for last. And it's nice being able to watch. Like I was supposed to go last weekend with Justin and Jonathan to Sandstone Peak and mm -hmm. they watched the sunset there. And that was pretty crazy. Like I was going to go, but I was so in my groove of just booking the trips that I was describing. So sunset for me. And then spring wildflowers or fall colors? In our part of the world, we don't really have fall colors. Like we'll have like sycamore trees, but nothing like the, the aspens. So I just got to go with, you know, my experiences. I got to say wildflowers for sure. And just because there's such a diverse array of them, like here there's paintbrushes, there's lupine, there's bear grass. So I just love the diversity in wildflowers. And then I think SoCal is really known for the diversity of these next two. But when it comes to your hikes, do you prefer long and gradual hikes or short and steep ones? I don't love incline. I love being able to just take everything in, look around. So I really don't mind a gradual incline. It just, it feels better. But at the same time, if you do a, a hike with incline, you're able to spend more time up there. So yeah, but I got to hand it to the steady incline. It just feels better. I'm able to take everything in and not think about, oh gosh, I'm in so much pain. Oh, you know, yeah. all, all the thing. Yeah. The last question I did want to ask you, because this is something new that you've started over the last year, and that's your blog. Can you share a little bit about the origin story of that blog and how people can check it out? Yeah. So I have a blog. It's named Grateful Galvanters, and basically it brings the community together. There's so many people that have 
amazing life stories. And over my time being a part of the community, I've seen this and it just got me thinking one day, like, gosh, you know what? I'm just going to do it. Like, I'm just going to create this blog. I had a couple people in mind that I asked, I pitched them the concept I had and they loved it. And so, yeah, I just went to work, built the website, got my domain name. Yeah, it's been pretty successful. Counting you, it, I have had seven guests so far. And I used to read Chicken Soup for the Soul books mm-hmm. growing up. It lay at night in the bookshelf. And I just loved how there's just stories of inspiration in there. So I just felt like everybody in the community has a story to tell. Everyone has something that they're grateful for. So I want people to be able to read it. And if they're going through something similar, if, if they've already been through similar experiences, then it gives them that perspective that, oh, yeah, you know what? I, I should be grateful for that. Or I, I have a lot of good things in my life. Like I'm blessed and grateful and whatnot. So it's just my way of helping people, helping to make the world a better place because people do community service. They work in food banks, cleanups. Like that's their way of helping to make the world a better place. To me, it's this blog that allows me to help make the world a better place. Just for people to see that there are people who've struggled and who've overcome those struggles or there's people who are just happy, are, are just grateful. So if someone's down, if someone's sad, depressed, they can read the story and hopefully it'll help cheer them up. Or they'll send the story to someone else who's going through something. Hopefully, I wanted to make it a cycle of people. And with that being said, I'm going to be launching a podcast some point later this year that's going to be an extension of the blog. So Ivan, you're going to be my first guest. And yeah, it's really just, like I said, an extension. I'm going to be touching on what you wrote and then allowing the audience to get to know the blog emitter more and stuff. So yeah, I love it. Been really popular so far. It's been a wonderful guest. Even some that have been on your podcast, like Tammy on the Trails, Mm -hmm. such a wonderful person. Her story was just amazing. I'll have her on the podcast, but for those of you who don't know it, just look up gratefulgalvanters.com. That that's my website. You can go there and view all the stories from there and once my blog or my podcast writer is up and running, then I'll add that information in my link tree and but yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up. And we'll be sure to put it in the episode show notes so people can click the link and follow and I definitely want to give you your flowers because this is a full circle moment cuz I don't know if a lot of people know this, but you are actually the first person I recorded virtually when I pivoted from going on the trail recording to virtual recording. Number two. You were the second episode that we released, but you were the first one I recorded with virtually. And the fact that we can meet in person nearly two years later, record another episode, but in person at a beautiful national park, and then to have the honor to come on your podcast is really a full circle moment. And the things that you're doing for the community grant is just incredible. You know, everybody has their daily stressors, But one thing that I really enjoy about your content is it's a nice break from the everyday struggles. It's always positive. It's always great. And what you're sharing with the community is just unbelievable. So I appreciate you. Yeah, I just how I operate as a content creator is I there's so much negativity in the world. Like you said, so much stressors. I want people to be able to come to my page and view it as kind of a, a safe place, stuff that they can get away from that negativity. And I'll even post a reel sometimes asking people how they're doing. And they're able to, you know, comment how they're doing or DM me and I'll get back to them or other people will get back to them. So yeah, I just feel like, like I said, there's so much negativity. I just want to remain positive. And hey, I recognize it, it's hard to be positive all the time. I'm not even, I don't even feel positive all the time. So sometimes Sometimes I'll make poster reels telling everyone like how I'm feeling like, yeah. oh, like I have depression. So I'll say like, oh, yeah, I'm feeling depressed and stuff. So I'm also honest. Yeah. Like because there's toxic positivity yeah. and that's being positive all the time. And I feel like that's really unsustainable. So I don't get in the toxic positivity territory, but I do stay positive. Like even when I'm telling about my struggles, it is my way of being positive because it allows people to see that I'm going through something, but I'm working through it. And I always work my way out of the ruts that I'm in and it it just gets better. So yeah, back when I was first year guest, I definitely had things in my life that my life wasn't, uh, like I was just starting to content create. And then my career, there's a lot that was not settled. And yeah, my life definitely 
was more of a mess than it is now. So it's interesting, just a uh, full circle. So now I'm able to tell people, you know, I, I went through the, these struggles and I'm doing okay, but just know that not everything's going to be okay all the time. You know, you're going to go through hard times. You're going to go through struggles, but it's like a, a storm, you know, it might rain for a, a little while, but eventually the sun's going to come out and that's going to shine again. It's been an honor to have you on the podcast, recording out here in a beautiful location. I really look forward to what 2024 has to bring you. For folks that want to follow your content and social media, where are some of the places they can follow you at? And if you can give them the blog website one more time. Yeah, so your name is Galvanting with Grant, Galvanting dot with dot Grant. It's my IG handle. And then uh, if you go to my bio, I have my link tree and I have the link that takes you to my website. I have the link to, I have a YouTube page, believe it or not. I do intend on getting that up and running again. YouTube is actually where I got my start. So that'd be pretty cool. I will get that up and running, but my YouTube page is also there and it's a longer length. I'll have like roadies on there and they talk. So yeah, so it's just those three, I think. But yeah, yeah, my link tree is where you can access everything. Well, Grant, it's great to have you on the podcast podcast again yeah thank you everyone out there for listening uh to us i just want to give ivan i want to give him his flowers just bringing on so many wonderful people so many people that are doing wonderful things in the community it's really wonderful like i'll feel down sometimes and i'll listen to his episodes and be like oh wow that's so cool that person oh that's a new place just really high high quality people that he brings on and i've even given him a couple recommendations so that's been pretty cool but yeah you're doing wonderful things in the community a lot of people including myself appreciate you and I'm looking forward to seeing what are you on season seven season seven season yep. seven man you killed it man so really looking forward to seeing how the rest of the season unwinds and then in the future and that brings us to the end of this episode alongside grant we extend a heartfelt thanks to him for coming on the podcast make sure to follow his adventures on instagram at gallivanting with grant also don't forget to check out the episode show notes for more And a special thank you to you, our listeners, for your continued support. I appreciate you all, and I hope each of you had an amazing summer hiking season. We'll be taking a short break as we prepare for Season 8's premiere episode on Monday, September 23rd. Stay tuned for details. New episodes will be dropping every Monday with occasional bonus episodes on Fridays. To ensure you never miss out on those thrilling tales, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Your support means the world to us. Don't forget to join our vibrant community on Instagram at Hikes and Mikes. We'll be sharing episode visuals, my own personal hiking content, and so much more. Let's stay connected and continue to inspire each other on this remarkable journey. As we bid farewell, remember to tread those happy trails, embrace the great outdoors, and keep the spirit of adventure alive. Until next time, my fellow explorers, happy hiking. This episode's music was created by Ketza. Follow him on Instagram at Ketza Music. Hey everyone, hope you've all been enjoying the trails this summer. I gotta be honest, leading group hikes is a blast, but capturing all the amazing memories can be a challenge. That's where our new podcast sponsor, the Cameo Journal, comes in. This thing's built for travelers and hikers by fellow adventurers. It's a pocket-sized rugged journal designed for you to collect up to 100 entries from all your trail mates, your life guests, and anyone else you meet along the way. Basically, it can be a guest book for your travels and an awesome keepsake. Logan over at the Cameo Journal is a backpacker himself and put all his love for travel into the design. So if you're looking to level up your hiking adventures, head over to thecameojournal.com to grab one not just for yourself, but for your crew too.